kind of easy to assume that people that do a ketogenic diet are automatically eating copious amounts of meat and cheese. And although that happens a lot, there's also a pretty large group of plant-based ketogenic individuals. And I think that a discussion needs to be had with someone that really understands the world of ketosis, Dr. Dom DiAgostino. Uh, so I brought him on my channel so that we can, we can discuss just this. We can talk about plant-based keto and how it's absolutely doable. Now, I'm not plant-based. I've certainly done stents of plant-based keto and actually felt great on it. Um, but I know that a lot of our viewers are. And yeah, let's open a good discussion on this. Yeah, because we realized that we didn't really delve into this topic specifically, yeah. <laughs> but we've tiptoed around it. And, uh, and I think it's super important because it is the overwhelming uh, question that I get via emails or just uh, messaging. So it actually inspired uh, us to create in the Keto Nutrition blog, uh, our very first blog article was a plant-based ketogenic diet. And uh, I get a lot of questions from people who are vegan and people who are vegetarian or even pescatarian. And I think there is, I think it's important to recognize that the ketogenic diet is really a macronutrient ratio that's associated with putting you into ketosis. And, and also appreciate that uh, that can incorporate uh, fiber can actually help to attenuate the glycemic response that we get from protein and things like that. So I've noticed that if the more plants and fiber that I incorporate into the diet, including salads, broccoli, asparagus, artichoke, things like that, that uh, improves my CGM uh, trace and my insulin levels stay low. Uh, when I incorporate more plants in, I think probably because it's blocking that. But I, th I think it's important that that people realize that a ketogenic diet is just not a heavy meat and cheese based diet. And there are married, many different variations of ketogenic diets and incorporating more plants and fiber is a good thing to do all around. And there's different ways to do that. Absolutely. And one of the things that I've, I've noticed is, you know, when you look at even a, you know, the clinical sort of four to one ratio of fats to protein of kind of the, the, the clinical ketogenic diet, that in a lot of way lends itself great to a vegan diet because yep. I think that one of the biggest concerns and biggest hurdles that vegan dieters face is generally getting adequate protein. Well, in a lot of ways, the ketogenic diet actually with its leucine sparing, muscle sparing effect could actually allow that vegan or plant-based eater to get by with less protein than they ordinarily That's would. Right. So it actually lends itself quite well because the, the concern over not getting adequate protein is actually somewhat absolved. Like you can lessen that protein, so that's one less thing to worry about. Um, it's it's kind of nice. You're, you're just you're actually having a muscle sparing effect without having to work as hard at getting protein. So I've always very true. Like it lends itself perfectly in that category. Yeah, it, it's really important to acknowledge a ketogenic diet is protein sparing, and ketones, by virtue of their ability to replace glucose as a an energy fuel for your heart and your brain, and your brain does have really high glucose demands. So elevating those ketone bodies have an anti-catabolic effect. Yeah. Uh, some, some data indicates potentially an anabolic effect, but I think nonetheless, we, we all agree from a metabolic biochemical standpoint that ketones are have anti-catabolic effects. And we have published about this. We're actually interested in using exogenous ketones to mitigate cancer cachexia, and have published a couple articles on that. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a very good point that you bring up that you can get away with less protein on a ketogenic diet just by virtue of the fact that ketones are protein sparing and, uh, and they spare, yeah, like you had mentioned, leucine branched chain amino acids yeah. are spared when, uh, when we look at the profile. Also, alanine is also um, reduced. So alanine is the major gluconeogenic precursor. And when you put someone on a ketogenic diet or if you administer exogenous ketones, uh, the blood levels of alanine go down, and that's alanine is a gluconeogenic amino acid that is catabolized in skeletal muscle, and when it's liberated, the function of liberated alanine is that it goes to the liver and converts to, to glucose. So it becomes a glucose, it becomes a major uh, precursor for glucose, so you have your, your skeletal muscle is giving up less alanine yeah, when we elevate and sustain uh, ketosis. Okay. So it's so an important anti-catabolic mechanism or counter-regulatory mechanism. So by, by seeing that you have 
lower levels of alanine, you are able to essentially determine that the muscles are giving up less of it. So you, yeah, okay, that's very interesting because I knew that it was a big driver for gluconeogenesis. And gluconeogenesis is yeah, creating glucose from substrates, different substrates from uh, glycerol backbones, from uh, you know, from proteins, from amino acids. So it's always happening to a certain degree given circumstances, but it's always a concern within the ketogenic community um, that, oh, well, I'm burning up muscle to create this glucose through gluc gluconeogenesis. Um, and with the vegan community, it should be an even larger concern. They'll definitely be paying attention to muscle wasting. So yeah, it sounds like a ketogenic diet could yeah. be perfect. Enough. Now today's video is sponsored by a company called Seed. Uh, you've probably seen them floating around the internet before, but Seed is really cool. Not only do they do a bunch of their own microbiome research, and uh, they probably are the biggest forerunners when it comes down to like companies investing in microbiome research, it's really cool, but they have a cool technology. So if you look at the footage right now I'm showing, it's got a capsule inside of a capsule. This is like unreal stuff, like really cool tech. So when you take this probiotic, it's a symbiotic. So it has a prebiotic and a probiotic, and they kind of have a multi-stage delivery where part of it digests in your gut, and then the rest of it kind of goes down into different areas of your small and large intestine. This is really cool stuff because it means that they are working hard towards making sure that it's getting to the right place, okay? So that link down below will save you 15% off of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. Absolutely has Thomas's stamp of approval on it. I've been talking about them for about a year and a half now. I've really been a big fan of them and using them regularly. So that link's down below. Save 15% off using that code and using that link. So check them out. Yeah, and if you're vegetarian, I mean, eggs are like the best source of protein you can get, and pescatarian fish is great too. So the ideal ketogenic diet may actually be incorporating a small amount of fish, some eggs, and maybe plant-based proteins too. If you're smart about it, you can, you know, uh, you can mix plant-based protein sources. And now we have plant protein powders and uh, protein isolates from plants, and that gives the possibility then, if you were to truly construct a vegan ketogenic diet, I think you would have to incorporate, even though it's lower in protein, to really get um, an optimal protein and amino acid profile, you probably have to uh, include some protein powders, some plant-based yeah, protein probably, powders. Probably would. I know your thoughts on that. And maybe even add some branched chain amino acids yeah, in there too, because that. that might be lower in plants. Pumpkin seed protein is great. Mm -hmm. uh, pea protein, chickpea protein, all these are, are good. And then another thing I think it's very important is um, if you are adding small amounts of fish in, which again, uh, we pescatarian, not vegan, so I fully understand, that can give you a very tremendous uh, omega-3 to 6 ratio, like yeah. tremendous because you're really, especially if you're watching what kind of seed oils you're bringing in otherwise. Uh, but one of the things that uh, people really want to pay attention to with plant-based is it might be advisable to take in some like algal oil or some form of omega-3, I mean, algal oil is essentially coming from uh, algae, basically. It's, uh, so it's the non-fermented version of omega-3, so it can still be rich in docosahexaenoic acid, so that DHA, which is omega-3 that's specifically very good for your brain, which is just super important if you're vegan in any category. Um, a question that I had for you, and this is a little bit deeper, and something that I've been very curious about because the research is a little bit weird, surrounding uh, vegetables and higher levels of butyrate that are produced from the consumption of lots of fiber. Yeah. Butyrate is only one hydroxy group off of beta hydroxybutyrate. Yeah. Uh, now, is, is there any evidence yet that's something that maybe higher levels of butyrate actually might drive ketone levels up possibly? Is there or any relationship there whatsoever since they're so close? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's very similar, yeah, to beta-hydroxybutyrate. So uh, the soluble fiber that we consume, yeah, it gets broken down to a high proportion of butyrate. And the colonocytes' main source for fuel are, is butyrate. And there's, I think, a couple papers indicate that beta-hydroxybutyrate may also be, you know, uh, a fuel for the colonocytes. So, yeah, butyrate in circulation functions, has a number of different properties, including uh, activation of enzymes that affect histones that we call histone deacetylase inhibitors. So there are many similarities to uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate and butyrate. And I don't think everybody has, anybody has, you know, unambiguously teased out all that mechanistically the difference between the two but there's a, a lot of overlap yeah. in mechanisms and signaling between butyrate and beta hydroxybutyrate yeah. so the issue with butyrate as a supplement 
is that, uh, and I tinkered with this years ago, it is like super smelly to the point where, you know, if you open up a can, it comes with, it comes a can inside of a can inside of a can. <laughs> and when I ordered it, I didn't realize that. I think I bought it from Sigma, but it smells so bad that you'd need to evacuate the building. Like I think, st oh, the, remember stink bombs? I don't know if you yeah. remember when you're, yeah. Okay. So that was probably, I think there was, it was like butyrate. So. Uh, making a supplement from butyrate is a bit problematic, but I think you can get really many of the benefits of butyrate through beta hydroxybutyrate. And yeah. it's just such an important signaling molecule, not only, I mean, we talk about it as a fuel, a brain yeah. fuel, but a signaling molecule too. And, well, and just, you know, eating high soluble fiber diet, that's going to- uh, Yes, you know, so that's, that's the best way. <laughs> take <laughs> yeah. care of the butyrate producers, because you have specific yeah. bacteria that are, are what are called butyrate producers or, mm -hmm. You know, propionate or acetate or all short chain fatty acids. Which, anyway, that's I mean, it's a completely different conversation, but I feel like it is relevant because um, obviously, in the ideal vegan diet or plant based diet, let alone a plant based ketogenic diet, there should be lots of vegetables. Yes. Uh, yes. Because like, how else are you going to fill up really? And it's ideally what you're after. Um, let's talk fats for just a second because this is where it could be concerning. And we covered this a little bit in another video, so if there's overlap, that's fine. Um, Overlap's good. The, yeah. yeah, I always tell my students. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of redundancy yeah. in my, my, my lectures, so overlap's good. <laughs> the, the seed oil conversation, because you could see like, okay, someone that's doing a, a vegan keto diet might be inclined to consume a lot of soybean oil or a lot of uh, perhaps you know, I don't really have a huge issue with sunflower oil, especially in the high oleic form, but like, you know, just maybe the overconsumption of it. Yep. Um, just any like words of maybe how they might want to tweak things uh, or change things, or is it really a concern? Well, I think it, uh, it comes down to ratios, right? So we talked about the omega-6 to omega-3 ratios. And if you're in the 20 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, it's probably not good. <laughs> if you can move that closer to even a 5 to 1 would be per probably perfectly fine, but ideally like a, a, two, a 3 to 1 or 2 to 1. Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy, especially in our modern food system, to rely heavily on uh, seed-based oils and if they are heated uh, and oxidized, I think they can really throw fire on the inflammatory flame. So, uh, so I think that needs to be you know appreciated and acknowledged. But if you're eating more of a whole foods-based ketogenic diet, then you're probably not getting too much of, of those yeah, exactly. uh, types of oils. So, so, and it's not so hard I think to you're probably okay. Add olive oil in, eat a bunch exactly. of avocados, yeah. and get you get your fats in that way. Yep. And uh, so if you don't like fish, if you don't like foods that are rich in omega-3s, uh, that is a supplement that and I supplement anyway, even though I eat sardines and, and a lot of fish. Uh, so simply supplementing omega-3s into your diet is one way to get that uh, omega-6, omega-3 balance in, in your diet. Absolutely. Well, I definitely feel like a lot of the, the general goals that people have with a plant-based diet outside of you know, whatever ethical reasons they have a lot of times from a, a sort of just physiology standpoint they're really looking to modulate inflammation like a lot, yep. that was a lot of their goal and I, I do want to say that you know that is one of the things that's looked at a lot with with ketone bodies with beta hydroxybutyrate is you know the inhibition of the uh, you know nlrp3 inflammasome nuclear factor kappa b really pretty big effects i'm very careful to talk about I never say decrease inflammation or any of those things on my channel. So I mean, but the modulation of that is definitely something that's heavily researched. And I feel like, um, you know, perhaps you're granted a little bit of amnesty in terms of the inflammatory effect of seed oils by being in a ketogenic state in the first place, if you're altering it or augmenting it at that, you know, nuclear factor kappa B level. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're preventing spikes in glycemia. So glucose spikes are eliminated. Insulin is much lower and sustained lower. And so a lot of the hormonal drivers for inflammation are, yeah. are reduced and metabolite drivers. So, uh, so I think that's important. And yeah, simply the, the foods that you're consuming to typically lend, lend that to less of an inflammatory you know, reaction. And you know, when people are initially starting a ketogenic diet, there may be some weird gut microbiome things going yeah, on, and they may, yeah. <laughs> they may go through uh, an inflammatory period the first week or two, but that's just because it's a stress to the body, hormetic stress, you're disrupting the gut microbiome in some ways, but then your, your microbiome adapts to what you are eating, and 
That's why I really do think that we want to preserve the diversity of the gut microbiome, you know, enhancing, uh, expanding the butyrate producing microbes in the gut can reverse dysbiosis. And I think a lot of people that I've communicated with have what I guess, you know, is a term now quite often used as uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. And it seems to be, well, the carnivore diet, but I think the, a keto diet ketogenic diet that's even pretty plant-based and high in fiber can help you know restore the gut in, in many ways and, and reverse that yeah yeah which i know can have a big effect on uh with SIBO a big effect in terms of yep. carbohydrate malabsorption in the first place so yep. it's uh with SIBO it's like a lot of times it's uh this perpetual vicious circle you know, yeah, vicious yeah. Cycle, excuse me. so you know you, you consume carbohydrates because it's just your normal diet and then you're having Carbohydrate malabsorption yep. because of you know usually amylase inhibition, other other things that are going on as a result of SIBO. So anyhow, but I think you know based upon this, I think it's 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 fairly safe to assume that ketogenic diet is absolutely doable, plant based. Um, you know, I, like I said, I did it for a few months or a couple of months just to, to try it out as a test on my channel a few years ago. Uh, mentally, felt amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I found it difficult for me to keep my protein needs met because I consume a fair bit of protein given just what I do. But it was very safe for me to say, like, hey, this is totally doable and feel quite good. So anyway. Uh, well, Same so, experience. Yeah. yeah. You've messed around with it, too? Yeah, I yeah. have for periods of time. But I, I do miss meat, you know, yeah. after a period of time. But I have done, like, uh, just eggs and fish. And I think I, I feel fantastic yeah. off that. And, uh, but I, I feel great eating meat, too. But I know it's doable. And I've done it for periods of time, but not... I've done it for uh, a few weeks to just get blood work, yeah. just to show. And everything actually went in a, I tried to keep control for my calories, and I, I would say that things did kind of go in a better direction. I don't talk about that too much, <laughs> but, uh, but I think I should probably redo that experiment because I wasn't, a couple of days I did eat meat here and there, small amounts, but I pretty much did kind of a, a meatless, you know, just focusing on eggs. Not, not a plant-based, completely plant-based, but... Well, let's, uh, let's set a time and we'll experiment together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For each other's support group. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.